Okay, so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna look at, by the way, I'm using the right clicker and the scroll wheel. So scroll wheel gives you the pan to move back side to side and the right clicker gives you the ability to rotate. So that just helps you kind of like move around and robo guide a little bit. So I'm trying to analyze how far I am from here to where my pickup position is here. So maybe it's like 200 mm or something like that. Now, in the real world, you definitely don't want to overshoot because an overshoot shoot can be a crash condition, uh, and, you're, and also you'll manually you need to manually test it anyway. So let's say, for instance, we're at negative like 148. So these are just rough numbers for right now. So let's just say negative 300. So I'm adding to the negative. So we just went negative 150 more roughly. Okay, so negative 150 more will then drop us into will drop us down lower. So I'll just say done. And so now you can see we're not at the same position anymore. This is, we're at this position, but we're not at this new one because I modified the position. So now that position in space has moved down. Actually, matter of fact, to perfectly call that out, since we're in this program and we're in RoboGuide, this is like an advantage also of RoboGuide. This is, notice like I'm, I'm navigating RoboGuide, just going back and forth between the, the right clicker and the scroll wheel click to make it, uh, so that way I can like get to exactly where I want to look at. So like whenever you're doing these type of things, like you have to dig in, look deep and study what you're seeing, you know? So like you're gonna have to move this thing around and see exactly. So I can kind of look at this and see that like it's a little bit lower than what it needs to be. And that's basically what I'm analyzing. So this is that second position. It looks a little bit lower than what it should be. It also looks like the, the, the robot is not currently over the appropriate position. And so you can see right here, P1, P2, P1, P2. So it, 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 it so nice advantage of Robo Guide. You don't really get this in the the real world robot. You might be able to see this in uh, some of the newer robots have uh, like 4D, and you might be able to look up and see these inside the 4D viewer. Yeah. So like you like you just advised, we're probably too far down. So we'll say negative 275 instead of negative 300. So we removed a little bit of that. And now so we when we say done. You should modify that position and brought it up just a little bit. And it probably did. So whenever we went from 300, we're talking in millimeters. So roughly a good rule of thumb is 25 millimeters is an inch. Yeah, so you might have some teach pendant things that are a little bit different because like this, this step button is over here versus a lot of times the step button is over here. So some of your buttons might be in a different position. So shift, step. So you can see up here in the top, this is, these are your indicators, whether you're in step mode or not. So you can see it toggling at the top there. So we want to be in step mode because if not, it's going to just run through the program. So I just put it in step mode. I jogged the robot down. And now we can kind of look at where the, like, the robot's position it. So I would say like the word for this is I just forwarded through the program. I forwarded through the program and I tested the position that I just wrote. So now I'm just looking at that. I need to be over here. So this position is completely off from where I actually need to be. You know, I can go, go ahead and just and go in here real quick and mess around with this position. By the way, notice this is really just a uh, robo guide issue, but like see how I'm clicking my cursor around and it's going to the beginning and the end? It's because the shift key is held down. You'll make this, you'll make them some mistake like a thousand times. But yeah, so I turn that off and then I go here. I'll go to position again. And then uh, I need to zoom out from the robot to see where the base of the robot is. So once you know the base of the robot, then you know your X, Y, Z, if this is in, if this is in a world frame. So if we're in world frame, the, the robot's facing me. So, or facing us, however, however you're looking at this. But, which means X is facing towards me. And then Y is facing uh, away from this fixturing. So Y positive is this direction, X is this direction, and then obviously Z positive there. So the reason for that is, is now, like I notice my, the robot is uh, off in this direction here. So I know that if this is a positive and I need to go over some more, I'll zoom in again. I'll see like, okay, like how, how many millimeters do you think this is? Uh, maybe 50 or 75 millimeters, okay? So going with my right hand rule, that means positive is this way. So I need to go in the negative direction towards the part. Uh, so with that being said, if I need to go to the negative direction, let's say 75 millimeters, I'll just also say with rough positioning, this is negative 1950. Obviously like your final programming, like you'll fine tune this and might have to get it down to some closer millimeters. 
just kind of depends on what operation you have. Some operations, it doesn't really matter. I'm glad that just happened. This is something that a lot of people will make this mistake and be very, very careful to not make this mistake uh, because it'll just, it can cause some major issues. But the mistake is, I basically just exited it out. I didn't give it, I didn't say done. So if I just say next or select or any other button, if I don't press this done button, it won't confirm the changes that I just made. Which means I, th I let, if I don't press the done button, I think I made the changes, I didn't make the changes, and I'll be like, I'll be, first of all, I'll be confused. Secondly, if it was something to avoid some type of crash, well, now you're gonna crash because, you know, you didn't make the change you thought you was gonna make. So we'll say done. Notice I'm not at, at any of the positions now because I modified this position and we're not actually at that position. So again, we'll do the exact same process, shift forward. In the real world, this would create a crash. So this tool right here, this purple piece, would crash into this part. So you'd have to jog the robot up and then you'd have to move the robot, or you wouldn't necessarily have to move the robot over, but you have to at least jog the robot up before forwarding. Now I don't care because it's simulation software so I can run right into the part if I want. So shift forward. Okay, get, this is another one that'll really help with any type of program things. Function, one, abort all. So abort all basically means abandon what you was doing in a program because the program will lock onto particular positions. So since I already forwarded to this position before, so going back into the shift forward, I'm gonna shift forward. It came over here, a little bit too far. In RoboGuide, you can also use the shift key to turn on and off the shift. And also too, one thing that's really nice is see how the shift key, when I, uh, when I hold the shift key, it holds the shift button. So you don't accidentally leave it on. So it's kind of it's kind of nice. So shift forward, I'm already at that position. I need to modify that position again. Position, modify. So I went too much. So we'll just say like negative 1925. So I just went from negative 1950 to negative 25. I gotta hit the done button. Make sure to hit the done button. And then we're also, we're, again, we're not at the position. And I already know just from experience, I need to go function one aboard all because uh, it's gonna do the same thing and not let me go to that position if I don't do that first. So I can click the shift button here, or I can click the shift button on my keyboard and then go forward. Boom, now we're at the position. That position looks fairly appropriate. We're still not at the position 100% because we're not uh, inside the part. This little purple ring should be inside this, this part. One thing to keep in mind is now that we modified all these things right here, our approach position is not in the appropriate position because we recorded it up here when, all, when everything was off. So the Z height of it doesn't really matter, but we changed the Y direction. So this is another use case where doing direct entry, this is also what this is called. So when I click position and I manually punch these in, we call that direct entry. 